Hey guys, it's Barrett with the Gimme Camper. So today we're just going to introduce a project that we want to share with you guys. So we're starting to do some renovations on a Little Guy Max teardrop camper. You know, it's one of the bigger teardrop campers. This camper belongs to some friends of mine named Tyler and Mandy. And they're just wanting to do a few things to help them out in their journeys. And that way they can go off the grid a little bit more. And me and Tyler, we used to do some backpacking and stuff together. So we're, we're used to going without electricity and stuff. But, you know, it's nice to have some lights and stuff whenever you need them. So we're going to upgrade their system. Tyler was actually asking me um, what lithium batteries that I would recommend. And, you know, I love my line energy batteries. But if I had it to do over again, I'd probably go with a budget battery off of Amazon um, or build my own. You know, that's where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. But, you know, I do love my line energy batteries and I have three of them. However, when Tyler was asking me this, I was actually thinking back, I was like, you know, this company called Uniwix said that they would send me a battery to review. I bet I can get that battery for you. So I reached out to them, told them that if they want to send me a battery, I would give them an honest review. And we worked that out. So I'm going to share that with you guys. I'm being honest with you. So I didn't pay for this. And, you know, it, it's around, I think it's around $500 it retails for. The Amazon link will be down below. But we're going to go over the good, the bad, and any ugly we find along the way, okay? So they did send me a 100 amp hour 12 volt battery. And, you know, before I do a full review on this, we're going to do some testing on this product. One of the main things that I want to test, I can't really test right now, is the cold weather charging protection. You know, this is where a lot of these budget batteries have weaknesses. They all say they have cold weather charging protection. And then, you know, you watch these guys like Will Prowse, they tear them apart and they put that sensor in some freezing water and it does not turn off the charging. And so that can be a little bit of a fallacy. I want to see if this company's true and honest when they say it has cold weather protection. I hadn't been able to find any proof of that, um, whether it does or doesn't, you know, on any of my research on, on different reviews and stuff. So, you know, that's just something to keep in mind. Now, that being said, I'm going to tell you that does a battery, if it doesn't have cold weather protection, does that mean it's crap? No, it doesn't. You know, a lot of people don't even camp when it's cold, so it doesn't even matter to them. You can still use it when it's cold. You're just not supposed to charge it when it's cold. And when I say cold, I mean below freezing. This battery it does have lithium iron phosphate chemistry, which is the industry standard and the safest, most stable lithium battery chemistry. And why is that important? Well, it's important because if you remember like 10, 15 years ago, it's all over the news. These like they had these phones that were exploding everywhere. It's because they use a different type of lithium chemistry. So Tyler actually commented about how light this battery is compared to the conventional battery that we removed. This battery does support a hundred amp hour maximum discharge rate. And let's not forget the main reason that we want to go to lithium to start with, and that's more power. You know, remember you get twice as much power with lithium battery for the same amp hour. You get twice the amp hours usable space from lithiums than you do lead acids because with those lead acids you got to stop draining them down about 50 percent with lithiums you can take that a lot further down some companies like line energy say you can take it all the way down to zero some companies say like five ten percent but still essentially it's twice as much power and that won't hurt the battery at all to get it to drain it down to their maximum depth of charge that they rate that won't hurt that battery at all for you to drain it like my line energy batteries that say you can take them down to zero. I don't take them down to zero very often, but they go down to zero a couple of times in the winter time. I'm hoping that with some electrical upgrades that I've done this year that that won't happen anymore. So we'll have to wait till next winter to see. But you know, with the lead acid battery, you take it down below 50% two or three times, that thing is toast. So far, the only negative thing I can say about this Uniwix battery is that it didn't at least I didn't find it could have been in the box, but I didn't find any posts or any bolts or anything like that. So I had to stop what I was doing. I had to run down to the hardware store and buy some M8 bolts because they were metric. And I thought about one inch would be fine, but they were about twice as long as I could use um, because the threads weren't that deep. So we actually stacked some washers on there and that way we could complete the circuit. I really just did this for temporary sake, but uh, the more I think about it, I think we may leave those washers on there. 
that way it does give you something if you need to hook a battery charger or something to say you have a vire air compressor um, or tire minder air compressor and you're you know need to hook those alligator clips up and get it running that gives you something to clip on to now when we installed this battery we did use the same location that we had the lead acid battery in before which was a custom built box that's pretty baller on the front of Tyler's camper there you know a lot of people have these with the little guy Max's he got his from this company up in Northeast Tennessee he said they were great people to deal with they were great great to buy from great to work with and I'll put their name like at the bottom here and their stuff in the description their contact information because I'm not sure what their name is I'll have to reach out and ask them now there are pros and cons to leaving the battery in this location the pros are obviously that it's a pretty simple install I mean all you really have to do is unhook the old battery pull it out put the new battery in hook it up the cons is that the battery is going to be exposed to more temperature issues during those freezing weather times that we talked about. You know, Tyler did ask me if he needed to remove the battery in the winter time and keep it on trickle charger. I told him there wasn't any reason to do that because with lithiums, you know, they're going to stay charged longer. They're not going to drain down and you don't have to worry about it draining down past that 50%. So if you turn that cutoff switch off, that way you don't have any parasitic draws on there. I think that your battery should be good all winter long and that's if you don't even use it. Now we did put in a battery monitor whenever we did this so we did uh, increase that difficulty by just a little bit and you know the reason we did that is just so you have more idea about what's going on with the system. I think that battery monitors are number one they're not that expensive especially if I mean they can be if you get like the uh, big ones that have the Bluetooth capability and all that but if you just get the small basic one for 30 40 bucks as long as it's rated for the amp hours that you're gonna be drawing it's gonna work fine for you but that allows you to know when that battery is getting low and it allows you to know how fast it's charged and it allows you to know any like parasitic draws about how how much is coming out of your battery at one time and I just think that the information that battery monitors give you is invaluable. I did have to make a mount because we left that out in the in the storage box too. And so I took a piece of steel that I had left over. I cut a rectangle out of it with a grinder, used a hole saw in order to mount the battery monitor there. And then I took, put it in the vise and bent it over so that we could have a little side tab to mount it to the toolbox. And it worked out pretty well. And we'll have more information on that and the overall system coming up in this series. This is just the first step. The next step is going to be replace the converter because the converter that's in the camper was not lithium compatible. You know, does that mean it's not going to work? No, that's not what it means. It'll work, it'll charge your battery, but it won't charge it all the way up because those regular standard converters, they charge at a lower voltage than the lithium battery converters. And so whenever you do that, that voltage is going to be kind of what keeps that tank from topping all the way up. So I was actually going to put in my Progressive Industries converter that I took out of my camper and I got over there and I realized that this little guy Max is such a small space that they actually had a power center converter that was all in one unit. And I probably could have went ahead and disconnected the converter out of there, but I didn't want to like tear up anything. So I reached out to my friends at WFCO who I've worked with in the past. I love the converter that they sent me for the camper here. I was just going to use that kind of when we were boondocking just for a charger. I actually changed my whole electrical system, which we'll have videos coming up on too. You know, I have a video on that converter already, and that converter is baller. I love it. So, you know, I think the one that they're sending me for, for this teardrop is not as high as an amperage, so it's going to charge slower. But if it's anything compared to what I got here, it already gets a thumbs up for me. So whenever we get that, we'll have a video on getting that installed. We'll uh, you know, use the system for two or three months. We'll get a feel of how it is, how it's working, how the battery's holding up, and then we'll get back with it. I'm also gonna reach out to a couple of companies, see if I can find Tyler a uh, solar suitcase. That way he's got a portable solar panel he can take around to keep it charged and not have to use his generator as much. He said he doesn't use a lot of power, but he just likes knowing that the battery's charged. And I think if we found like a 200 watt solar suitcase, I think that that would you know, keep him pretty good. So we're gonna do that. We also have on order an inverter um because i was thumbing through my emails and somebody asked me if i wanted to review a, an inverter you know it's a cheaper chinese model but i told them if they wanted to send me one for this project we put it in we test it out put it through its paces and so we'll do that too now as we get this stuff done 
we get more stuff in the camper over here we're going to let you know how it's going and we're going to give you more thorough updates along the way so guys i just want to thank you for joining in thanks for stopping by thanks for being part of our family and uh, we'll see you next week do not forget to hit that subscribe button